Good morning, all my friends. <clears throat> there I go losing my voice again. It's these stupid allergies. I'll start over. Good morning, all my friends. How is your Tuesday going? I can tell you what. Um, This disaster in Baltimore scares the hell out of me. I'm already scared of heights. I'm already scared to go over bridges. I'm real careful. Well, as careful as you can be driving over a bridge. But to even think that a damn boat is going to crash into the bridge. It is crazy. We have some new names in here and some names we haven't seen in a while. Before I bring up our special guest for today, let's take a second and tell everyone, hi, hello, howdy, welcome your neighbor. All right, today is one month since little Sebastian vanished, and I have a million questions. We've been talking about Sebastian a lot in Discord and the CLL Facebook group, and you've heard me say before, oh, I'm just following on Trev's channel because every day something's going on. But today is the month marker, so I thought we'll discuss amongst ourselves. A lot of people have been asking me, what do I think? What do I think? Uh, I feel like I'm in some sort of parallel Don and Candace Wells universe. Because the stories are not matching up for me. The stepdad, if you want to call him that, Chris Proudfoot, has slipped a couple of times and placed himself at the home. Then I have a question. Did Sebastian even make it home the night before? Did he run away? Let's face it. It's safe to say. He wasn't um, treated too well at the proud foot home. Did he meet somebody on, let's say, the Minecraft game? It wouldn't be unusual. We have talked about other cases where kids have met people online and a lot of it is through these computer games and then they get out of the house. They go somewhere else. It happens quite a bit. There's a girl in Jonesboro, Arkansas reported missing yesterday. Her name's Kennedy Carter. It's circumstance like that. I have a ton of questions. I really do. I have a lot of questions about the snakes. I wouldn't have any child take care of that many animals by themselves. Snake or no snake, whatever. We've heard that Sebastian's been hit with a belt. I watched the whole Nancy Grace thing last night. We're going to talk about it today. There's a big shit storm with this Cajun Navy that came in. I don't even know what the hell's going on with that. This is a lot. I agree with Evelyn Art on Nancy Grace last night. It did seem to be selective memory for me. So without further ado, let's bring up our very special guest. Very good friend to me and to all of you, Trev of Trev Time. Well, get up here, you old stranger. Good morning. 
It's been a long time and you have been busier than a one arm paper hanger with this case. Much respect to you for how you have factually and respectively, respectively, if I'm saying it right, covered Sebastian's case. Thank you. He, he needs the attention. Um, he's needed it since he went missing and he's finally getting good coverage now. And I'm thankful for that. Well, at first, I really thought that he might have wandered off. But the more I heard about him, because some people were sort of, um, and I don't mean you, um, kind of dumbing him down a little bit, kind of making it sound like he wouldn't know how to get back home and stuff. Did you see any of that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, it just depends who you listen to and what, what you hear. I mean, it's. I thought the same thing. When he first went missing, I thought he wandered off. Um, and as time went on without any known sightings or real scent track, uh, it, it seemed less likely. And, of course, now we're here on day 30 and nothing. Well, no scent track. He's got to be somewhere. It did um, blow my mind when I believe this is his aunt, the name is scratched out. February 27th said, hey, everyone, this is my nephew. He is high functioning verbal autistic. He walked out of the house in the middle of the night with his glasses, a small flashlight and no shoes. We have been searching since 6.30 a.m. yesterday. They are searching the 10 miles around his house, but I'm worried that me, he may have gotten into got in back seat of a car and fell asleep and woke up after someone got to their job and got out of the car. She says, it's possible. I'm trying to think outside of the box to help find him. Ugh, it's just so hard. You never know how kids think. Please keep a lookout. Thanks. What a very strange theory. Yeah. For one, no one's going to get in their car and drive to work and not notice a 15-year-old kid sleeping in the back seat. Yeah. I mean, people have to remember Sebastian is, no matter where he functions mentally in certain situations, he is a full-grown child. I mean, he's 15. There are adults who are not 5'5". Five five. He's, he's, I mean, he's fully, you know, he's, he's tall. He's, he's a full-grown kid. This is not a case of like a missing tiny, tiny child who could get lost somewhere or get stuck in a car and you not see them. In my opinion, you would you would see a five foot five, 15 year old boy in your car. I would hope. I would hope so. I would hope that you would be that um, pay attention that much. Yeah. Lots of questions about his mom and stepdad. This was shared about how they're eating out while the search is going on. And Chris Proudfoot said they can't search because of death threats. Now, what is your take on these two? And I know you're going to be fair and honest. Yeah, um, I definitely had have my questions. I've actually spoken to uh, the stepfather. And there, there are questions that I, that I do have as far as just, um, you know, some things don't add up. At the same time, I respect the fact that law enforcement has told us they're cooperating and nobody's been named a suspect. So I hope that they're not involved. Um, I, I do question a few things, but, you know, I mean, really the lack of answers is the worst part. Yeah. I mean, their stories don't make any sense. Something's not adding up because the truth always makes sense. Whether you like it or not, it makes sense. And I really feel like, again, I'm in some sort of parallel Don and Candace world. I feel horrible for the grandmother, Robin Rogers, and of course, Sebastian's daddy. She said, yet another lie exposed. CP, who was Chris Proudfoot, said on multiple interviews that he has left the door open for me to contact them. She said, I will admit that I left a very emotional message on 316, her Facebook messenger, and to tell her to tell the truth for the first time in her life. My understanding is there is a long history of Katie not being 100% credible. I wouldn't know because I don't know the woman. I did tell her that if anything has happened to my grandson, I would push death penalty penalty. Yesterday, I received the following from KP, 
who is the mom. Robin, please do not contact us again. Your messages have been forwarded to law enforcement as well as this request for you to no longer contact us. Why would you cut off communication with his own grandma? And then yesterday it was released that communication has been cut off with his father. How is that not suspicious? It makes no sense. Um, Seth's family is, out, I mean, they're, he's out there looking and his family is out here supporting him. They're not all from this area. So some had to come up, travel quite a distance um, and, and be there for him. And Robin's been outspoken about her son and her grandson, and she's fully pushing for answers. And I don't blame her. She wants to know where her grandson is. I don't blame her at all. And then, of course, we have the, the Cajun Navy thing going on. Katie Proudfoot says, Sebastian, mommy loves you. Please share and search and report anything that could help. We have organized help with the Cajun Navy to join the search, and we pray every day we find Sebastian and can bring him home. Okay, but then it's being said that the dad, Seth, arranged. But then I saw posts, I think it was over the weekend, from the Cajun Navy saying, if anyone can get us in contact with them, let us know. Do you know the truth? Um, I, it's my understanding that Seth and people on Seth's behalf got in touch with the Cajun Navy. Okay. And then Don Schmidt, Sumner County Commissioner. He posted this, I am reaching out to ask people, please leave the search to the professionals. I just got off the phone with Todd Terrell with the United Cajun Navy. Todd said to trust the process. They are the professionals, leave the search operations to them and law enforcement. Everyone wants to help search. That's great. However, Todd Terrell did mention we can help by letting them perform the searches. So what do you think about this This um statement well the the commissioner there has he has been doing a lot to um to keep the word out about sebastian use his his platform in the area and i, and I respect that i do think that um people are going to want to search because they have been uh, there were just a handful of people searching at one point just a few people alongside seth and they're going to want to be out there searching and helping him look uh if the united cajun navy has specific areas that they're going to search i understand that they don't want people there but i think it's been kind of Unclear. I am thankful that a search team is there because Seth was leading all this basically on his own before um, once they scaled back the search locally. So I'm glad there are people to help. It's just been very unclear. And the search today actually was canceled due to weather. Um, so they won't be searching today. Okay. Makes sense. Well, if that's who's been invited in by the parents, maybe we just need to respect that. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Just accusations. Do you have any opinion on it, Trev? Because you know way more about this than I do. No, I mean, I just, I'm just kind of letting, letting them do what they're doing. Um, hopefully they just keep working alongside the family. I know they, Seth wanted them brought in and did ask people to um, respect their searching. So I'm going to respect that on, on his behalf. Yeah, that's how I would look at it. And that's, if that's what the parents want, can't really see too much for old KP, but Seth has been working tirelessly searching physically to find his son. He absolutely has. I mean, he's he's hurt his shoulder. He's, I mean, got blisters on his feet. His, he's in a lot of pain, but he's nowhere near stopping because he's he doesn't know what happened and he's got questions, but he he needs to find his son. That's what he that's all he wants. Okay, well, I want to thank Diana really quick for gifting Crime Lines and Lies memberships, and we're going to get to the update. Mermaid, who's been a member for 17 months, said, what about Katie's other boyfriend who has video? Katie, you salute. What do we know about Katie's other boyfriend, Trev? There are some rumors out of the neighborhood that um, Katie was seeing someone in the neighborhood. Uh, right now, that's just speculation, but it is one of the houses that turned in camera footage, uh, I believe. If that you know portion is true, it is the house near them that 
that turned in camera footage. And what do we know about EquiSearch supposedly coming in? Uh, EquiSearch, I know for a fact, has been involved. Uh, I know they have done drone searches by request of TBI, and um, they have uh, absolutely been involved. With, along, they've been working alongside TBI to hit certain spots with uh, drones and such. Okay, cool. So all hands on deck, sounds to me like. Absolutely. All right, Nick Barris, who I love his reporting skills. Love him. Two days ago, posted this. Sumner County Sheriff's Office not responding to the scene either. Now, this is about the volunteer search that was done over the weekend. Nick said, I will continue to seek answers on what, if anything, was found. Suffice to say, if it was significant, officials author official authorities would respond. I'll let you know if that changes. Now I'm going to go to your update about that search. Because I consider you to be reliable. And this is what Trevor posted. After hearing from a representative of the UCN search team, they state the cadaver dog hit from yesterday was not related to Sebastian's case and is believed to have been the remains of a homeless person who has previously been staying on the federal property where the search took place. So safe to say we can put that to bed now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yesterday on Nancy Grace, I believe it was the VP of the uh, United Cajun Navy was speaking, and he did confirm that, and that's where I heard that and shared um, that. And I believe once they, I guess once they look more, at least in what he was referring to, it was uh, somebody who appeared at least to be skeletonized and um, 28 days or however long in um, Sebastian would not have been. So it did lead them to believe it was uh, somebody who had been there longer. Right. So I'm with you. I understand there's all these rumors about the United Cajun Navy, whatever. But if his father asked for their help, I think we should just respect it. I mean, the county commissioner is saying he's speaking with them. And, and law enforcement is aware, to my knowledge, of all the things that people are saying and the, some of the issues that have been had uh, that people have with the UCN. So if it gets to a point that they don't want them there, I'm sure they'll ask them to uh, disengage from the from the case. Yeah, they haven't been shy thus far, have they? All right, so here's one of the updates from yesterday. There's News Daddy right there saying that the father, Seth, the biological mother, Katie Proudfoot, has cut off all communication to him. Well, that's sad. That's his father who's been out searching. Like Trevor said, He's worn out. I saw that he pulled his shoulder. He's got blisters on him. You know, who knows? And then here's Katie and Chris out feeding their face. They said they can't go search. They can't do anything because, you know, people are meany mean to them. They don't, they don't like them. What would stop you from searching for your child? They obviously still have an appetite. What the hell is going on? What would stop you from searching for your child? Would you honestly go out and enjoy a meal together and play on your phone with a search going on not too far from you and say, mm, well, you know, people don't like us. How, how are you going to tell Sebastian, let's say, God willing, Sebastian is found? 100% okay, he just ran away, he's been hiding out, whatever, it's happened before. How are you going to face your son and say, oh, we didn't go search for you? I've said that before about Don and Candace Wells. How are you going to say to your child, we didn't go search for you? Mm -mm. Disgusting. I don't get it.
for more on the search uh, for the teen and the concerns about what may have happened to that boy, we're joined by Seth Rogers, uh, Sebastian's father. Um, Seth, thank you so much. God bless him. He just looks worn out. Physically, mentally, he looks exhausted. You know he's got to be sick of the, Ki the Chris and Katie show. You know why she doesn't want to talk to him because he's asking her things she can't answer. Not because she doesn't know. That's just my opinion, though. So much for joining us. Um, I, 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 I'm so sorry for everything you're going through. We want to get the word out about Sebastian. Hasn't gotten enough national attention. Um, Sebastian, I want to be clear, was with his mom and stepdad uh, when, when he disappeared. But you're very close to Sebastian. Do you have any idea what may have happened here? I haven't been, I, I don't know. I mean, I got a phone call and a text message that I received after I got off of work stating that I needed to give the stepfather a call. I called him. And he All right. I found this to be a little odd. He gets a text message from Seth saying, not from Seth, I'm sorry, from the stepfather, Chris, saying you need to give me a call. Now, when there is a panic, you don't send a text and say, hey, when you get a second, give me a call. And why is it coming from the stepfather? This is concerning to me. Very concerning. Who's just going to go? It's like in the Madeline Soto case when Jen Soto couldn't find her daughter. What did she do? She sent an email to the teacher. Who the hell's got time for someone to check their shit? You go ring-a-ding. You call till they freaking answer. This is crazy. I'm just, that's, I'm very uncomfortable with that. He was like, Sebastian's missing. Don't be upset or anything, but you need to come to the house. I couldn't. I don't know what happened to him. Don't I've be upset. In over a month, I've been out here looking for him. <sighs> oh. That's a that's an interesting line to tell a father of a you know, like yes. imagine somebody calling you and telling you your child was missing and then saying, "Well, don't be upset." Okay, well, I'm still going to be. Sorry. This man's breaking my heart. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through this. For one, Sebastian reminds me of my youngest son. He he truly does. But you you send a text, give me a call, and then say, "Don't be upset." Why would you say that? Let, let's talk about that, Trev. Yeah, and Seth has made it clear that they they know that, I mean, because he works in a jail. Uh, he, he works for the sheriff's department, but he's specifically in the jail. He works 12-hour shifts, and so he can't have his phone in the jail. But you can reach him through his superiors, like his captain or lieutenant, forgive me which position works in there, but whoever it is, you can reach him that way. You call them. And he mentions they're like family in there. If you call him, then it'll be able to get to Seth. And they didn't do that. They just, I guess, left it on messages or whatever on Seth's phone. And then he found out as soon as he got back to his truck. Good God. She knows where he works. They have a child together. You can't find his son. What are your thoughts on Chris and Katie? Packing up the fifth wheel and heading down to Mississippi. They're out of town. Yeah, I've I've always heard, you know, that uh, in in these cases, and I've never been in their shoes, obviously, but I've heard in all these cases, you don't leave your house alone. What if the child comes home? And this is now that now the home is completely empty. Brandy Neal still sleeps on the couch thinking that Michael's going to walk through the door. She doesn't want to miss it. She's been offered vacations, getaways, you know, when they were doing the excavation. The, the police even said, we can set you up at a hotel so you don't have to be around this. No way. She wasn't going anywhere. And they, they <coughs> connect the fifth wheel and get the hell out of town. What are they related to uh, Grandis? That's 
kind of shit Grandis did about a month later. Yeah, nothing to do around here. I'm just going to get out. Got to be kidding me. Now, what do we know about, it has been said that Seth soon was going to have custody of Sebastian and Sebastian was going to live with him. Mm -hmm. Do you think Katie was upset about maybe losing child support? By the sound, sound of it, they had, it had been agreed upon that he would be moving in there. But the timing still, of course, does make people wonder because at the end of the school year, which is closely approaching now, we're almost out of March. Um, he was going to get or he was going to get Sebastian full time. Mm -hmm. And he would have flourished, in my opinion, with his father. Um, in your conversations with Seth. Do you, I mean, he hasn't lost hope from what I have heard, but I want it. I want a firsthand testimony. Yeah, no, I, I only speak. I've spoken to um, Seth's uh, siblings and um, people very close to him, and he absolutely has not. He he still believes that that Sebastian can come home. And I think and I've told people, I think if he can have that hope nearly a month later, we need to have that hope with him. Um, unfortunately, you know, the re the reality of it is the chances go down, but there's not a zero percent chance until we have proof that Sebastian isn't with us. So he absolutely still has hope that he can that Sebastian can come home. And regardless, he is on a mission to find his son um, no matter what happened. And God bless him for that. Amy in Boston, thank you for the super sticker. She said, in my opinion, if Sebastian does come home, Chris shouldn't be allowed near him. Now, of course, rumor only, because you know how Facebook is, you know how the internet is, that CPS has been alerted and that they're very involved. Obviously, that's a private thing. We're not going to know for a fact. But have you heard anything on your end that Tennessee Child Protective Services is balls deep in this? Um, he's, Chris has said himself, I believe, that, that they have opened a case following Sebastian's disappearance. Okay. Good enough for me. Seth, I mean, what did they think happened? I mean, did he just... I mean, could he really have just walked away like that? It just it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. His car, his shoes were still by, were still by the front door. His switch was there. His phone was in the kitchen. It just didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I still can't figure it out. I've been looking everywhere. Been handing out flyers. Been just trying to keep up hope. And I've reached out to United Cajun Nation to sit there and see if they will help me. And they answered my call. Yeah, one thing I couldn't understand is why they were telling people not to search at one point. I mean, the, the shift went to the landfill. It was this investigation, and they're telling people not to search. I couldn't make sense of that. I mean, it made me want. Do you have any indication that investigators may know that something bad happened here? Okay, let's talk about the landfill because I watched every second of your show when you went live about it. What is connected to the landfill? Because their trash collection doesn't go to that landfill. I'm understanding it has to do with a construction site behind their home. Is this true or false? Because um, it's my understanding, at least I believe Nick Barris reported that their trash does end up in the landfill um, mm -hmm. in Kentucky. It's a couple hours away from where they live. And law enforcement stated this was a precautionary search, but they did get a search warrant for it, which likely indicates that there was some probable cause to get a warrant. It probably doesn't take a lot because you're looking for a for a child, but for them to go out there and search that landfill, um, I do believe it, it came from a, from a tip. Okay. Lisa Wilson said, Chris said yesterday, no DHS involved. 
We call it DHS in Oklahoma. I didn't hear him say that, but we're going to get through it. I don't see how CPS couldn't be involved. And um, I'm not going to be shy to say this. I don't have a lot of faith in some of the CPS protocols, not just in Tennessee, but in a lot of places. We know in the case of Summer Wells, I'm not comparing cases, um, that nothing was done about the neglect and endangerment of the three boys or Hunter with Don and Candace's own admissions. Now, let me tell you something right now. Back in the 70s and 80s, you get whopped with a belt, nobody blinks an eye. But this is 2024. And it was admitted for God and everybody to hear. Do you have any thoughts on that, Trev? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah, like you said, it's, it's 2024. Things are... Things are different, and Sebastian is is a child on the autism spectrum, and that does not mean that he is any less than any other kid. But he does struggle in some ways, and there has to be some leeway there um, in those aspects that he does struggle with. You can't expect him to, yeah, that thing. Yeah, he did say that, but he may have changed that. But it doesn't. I don't think it changes the the fact that they are involved based on his original statement, but. Okay. Okay. Well, he might have changed it. A lot of things have changed. Yeah, we get new details every interview, so maybe he added a new detail. I don't know. Because, I mean, I've heard on your channel, I mean, and, you know, you're covering what, you know, Chris and Katie have said, and I'm just like, now before, that's not what they said. So, I mean, you've got to be super confused, too, and you could write a book on this case. Well, I'm very confused. Uh, things... The amount of times things have changed and we're we're now 30 days in. I mean, and it's not that a story changes, but when you keep adding details to it, how does a story get different? Um, if I go buy a book today and it's sitting on my shelf it's and it's 100 pages, it's not going to be 101 pages tomorrow because that story has already been written. February 26th already happened. Why does it keep getting new chapters added to it like it's growing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. New detail, and again, we have a case where detail that wasn't asked for is volunteered. That always sketches me out. It's like no one asked you that. And last night on Nancy Grace was more of an interrogation. She was treating them as like hostile witnesses, in my opinion. Were you impressed with that interview, Trev? Nancy does a good job. Uh, I'll give her that. And she presses what she wants to hear. Um, she knows that she's only going to get answers. You can't force somebody to tell the truth, but she's going to get the answers she's looking for. And it is no secret that Chris Proudfoot um, hasn't been good to other children as well. Um, exes, you name it. And he he's very arrogant about this stuff. Very arrogant. It's not a good look. Nope. They haven't told me anything and they told people not to search, but I've been searching since that Monday. I can't just sit around and not do anything. I've got to find my son. Yeah, I understand. I would be doing the same exact thing as you, and I think everybody uh, around America would be, and their their hearts go out to you. Have Have you talked to Sebastian's mom, uh, stepdad? You mentioned you had that conversation when when they said, you know, he's gone missing. But have they been able to give any more information? I haven't spoken to them for at least two weeks. They have, they're not talking to me. There are reports that they have packed up an RV and left left the house that Sebastian disappeared from. Any idea why they would do that? I have no idea. I have no information. They weren't talking to me, so I was out here trying to find my son. Do, do you feel that they were taking good care of him? I've got information from podcasts that they were showing that 
horrify me. At, what do you mean? I mean, were they on podcasts or? Uh, I'm sorry, I know this they is were, upsetting, they, but I just want to understand. They were going on podcasts and it was like, it's supposed to be about Sebastian. They wanted to talk about themselves. I don't get that. This is, we need to get Sebastian's face out to everybody. Have well, we've seen that before in other cases. Hell, we've seen interrogations where they're obviously asking about the victim and the person being interrogated just wants to talk about their damn selves. Listen to him. He's broken. Trying to get the information out there. They go on podcasts and they're just talking about themselves. Is anyone concerned about Chris and Katie? I don't think um, Trev Time is losing any sleep at night over Chris and Katie. Wondering if they're having fun on their camping trip. I'm, I'm worried about the same thing that said this, and that's finding Sebastian as quick as possible. Yep. Listen to him say that again. I mean, he's broken. It's just so much frustration. I cast and it was like, it's supposed to be about Sebastian. They wanted to talk about themselves. I don't get that. This is, we need to get Sebastian's face out to everybody. Have them looking for Sebastian. This isn't about me. It's not about his mom. It's not about his stepdad. This is about Sebastian. He needs to be found. Have they been searching at all? I mean, I know you're out there right now. Have uh, have his mom and stepdad been out there too? I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. I haven't seen them. And they've not been where I've been handing out flyers or searching. So I couldn't tell you what they've been doing. I mean, Seth, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad we have the picture up. He looks like such a young, a nice young man. Um, and, and I mean, <laughs> Would he ever leave barefoot? I know that's something that's perplexed some people. Um, and even people who have if, children on the autism spectrum have been perplexed by that. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. It does not make any sense. If he knew he was going to go out walking or anywhere in the yard or whatnot, he would put on socks and shoes. He had a horrible experience as a child with fire ants. He learned. I believe this 100%. It's not the first time we've heard that a child just walked out barefoot. And we're supposed to believe that he's milling around the woods of Tennessee barefoot right now. He's saying just to go outside just for a minute, he'd put on shoes and socks. So if this is a runaway situation, he would have his shoes and socks. I believe Seth 100%. What do you think, Trev? Yeah, he's his father. He knows him. I'm not going to to argue that. And he had an experience. There's two factors there. You've got him being him having ASD, certain sensory issues. But then you've also got his traumatic experience with fire ants. When I was a little kid, I sat down in a mound of fire ants. And uh, that was traumatic enough. He stepped in it and had it all over his feet. So he he doesn't go outside barefoot. So why would he why would he walk past his shoes and leave the house without his shoes? In the middle of the night, do you have a theory on when he actually went missing? We know when 911 was called. Do you have any theory on that? Of course, it's just your opinion, just a theory. On when... On when Sebastian actually went missing. Did he make it home the night before? Did something happen in the middle of the night? Was it truly his mother discovered he wasn't in his bed in the morning? Um, I caught on your channel, you were talking about it. Chris Proudfoot actually placed himself at the home. Was that a Freudian slip or what's going on? That's a great question. He did. He said, if he was talking about Sebastian getting out the window and he said, if Sebastian would have jumped out the window, 
we'd have heard something, meaning he and Katie. So that was odd. As far as when Sebastian went missing, I don't know. There's a gap there. And even if they're innocent, there's still going to be a gap there because she was asleep. My sources say that there's a camera very near the house that does show them coming home, Katie and Sebastian. So, and even taking out the trash later. So it is, it's understood, I think, that he did get home. But once he did, and once he went back inside, it's very unclear what happened from there. Dina Lynn said he also said we went to bed. And I'm glad you brought up the camera that caught the uh, trash trip because she works for Brinks. So you're telling me that she works for Brinks security and she doesn't have security around the house? I heard them say their cameras weren't working. Well, we've heard that before in other cases. On the day someone goes missing, cameras aren't working. What do you know about that, Trev? I guess it would help if I unmuted. Um, I've heard multiple stories about the the cameras. I don't know what to believe. I, you know, the house is like six hundred thousand dollar house. I find it odd not to have security, but but maybe people don't. Um, I just. I would think they would, but may maybe they don't. I don't know. I think the whole barefoot thing is to try to convince people he was abducted. I've read article after article after article, and I haven't seen anything with the FBI card unit saying if they have investigated abduction, ran away, foul play like they've done in other cases. But I could have just missed it. No, the FBI was conferred with early on when he was missing, and uh, I believe they decided, at least at that time, not to put anybody on the ground as far as from the Bureau, but they have been advising um, lo the local and, I guess, state agencies on on uh, what to do, and then they have been involved in, like, accounting for vehicles and um, certain investigative things on, on that route, on that front. And I heard this as well, Tracy. Thank you for this. She said, Chris Proudfoot said that he was home and left Sunday night at 9 p.m. He and Katie were on the phone as he drove back to Memphis. Well, what a coinky dink. You leave at 9 o'clock that night to go to Memphis. And then Sebastian just disappears. I don't know about that. That's interesting. I haven't heard him say that. I've heard that he was last home in early February and then was next home the morning of after she called him. There's so many different stories that come from these two. You can't make sense of it. Somewhere in there is the truth though. It's always socks and shoes or at least something on your feet to protect you from what's on the ground. Thanks so much for watching. Go to Joy. Oh, that man breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. All right. They're talking about a lot of frustrations. A lot. Now, Trev, are you heading that way today? Or are you making a trip? Or what, what are your plans? Yeah. So since they're canceling the search today, I, I'm either going to go um, in a bit and head that way and then uh, set up today or head out tomorrow depending on the weather, but I'll either be going today or tomorrow. Okay. Can I put your cash app up for people to send gas money and stuff like that? I don't want to embarrass you. I mean, if, if you'd like to. All right, let's do that. What is your cash app? I don't have it right in front of me. Oh, let me, let me pull it up. I, I don't even know it. It's a 55, actually. Whoops. So what is it? Trev. Here, let me look at mine. Hang on. I think I have it in mine. Hang on. Hang on. Let me see. Where's Trev? Where's Trev? Well, I don't have Trev in here. I thought I, I, found, I, I found it. Okay. I put it in the 
in the chat here. It's the second one. I, I mistyped it at first. Okay. Should have asked that before. Sorry about that. Okay, there's Trev's cash up. If you want to send a couple bucks for him to get some food, um, gas, you know, whatever. I'll put it up on the screen. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Brooks. And Absolutely. Here to be able to locate him will be a whole lot better. Frustration servicing in the search for Sebastian Rogers as nearly a month has passed since the 15-year-old with autism went missing from his home in Sumner County. Today, Sebastian's biological father and a group of volunteers searched again near the Rockland Recreation Area in Hendersonville for any clue leading to Sebastian. This, as they say, private tracking dogs alerted to a particular spot this weekend that they say hasn't yet been checked out by law enforcement. County leaders responding, saying, Saying that the volunteers need to quote trust the process okay and again law enforcement was not involved in that search they were not there whatever dogs hit they they did not hit on sebastian i don't know how to make that any more clear Law enforcement is not going to go search any area unless they have evidence that leads them to that area. We've learned that time and time again. Chrissy said, Trev is the one who's been screaming from the rooftop since day one. You bet. As the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and TBI scaled back the ground search for Sebastian Rogers to focus more on the investigative side of his disappearance, his biological father, Seth Rogers, continues to coordinate search parties in the weeks since. Law enforcement only has so many people. So it's us as a community, as well as a family, you know, to be out there searching and to assist as much as we possibly can. This weekend, a focus on the Rockland Recreational Area, about six miles from Sebastian's home, where Sebastian's mother and stepfather, Katie and Chris Proudfoot, believe he walked off in the middle of the night. Investigators saying they found little, if any, trace of the team. Sebastian's father telling me today that the initial search radius was about five miles and that he wants to scour as much area beyond that as possible. And let's make it clear, kids don't just disappear. They don't. And in this case, he's a teenage boy. He's not two. He's not three. He's not four. He's not five. Where you can put him in a duffel bag like Harvey Montgomery and tote him all around town. He's almost a grown man. So what the hell happened? Dogs don't lie. Cats do. I can tell you that right now because I have a pathological liar that's um, sleeping in his daddy's chair right now. Dogs don't lie. So if they could not find any scent of Sebastian, then that's where it's at. Even though Chris Proudfoot said you can't trust the dogs, dogs are not that reliable. Did you hear that, Trev? He did say that. So now Chris, is it a, a dog expert? When is he taking a polygraph? My understanding is that Katie passed hers. We've heard that before and everyone knows I don't care about polygraphs. But I have I find it very hard to believe that Chris has not been polygraphed. He claims that they told him he didn't have to take one because of his whereabouts. Okay, fair enough. We just want to find Sebastian. That that man over there is broken. He needs his son back. Nonprofit search group, the United Cajun Navy, already in town for the Riley Strain case, joined in the search effort for Sebastian Saturday. Searchers telling me two of their tracking dogs appear to hit on a spot. When the dog had to hit, everybody got out of the area so law enforcement could come in and do their job. Did they do that? I don't know, I'm not sure. But um, I feel like it was something that should have been, if not, been checked into. 
No confirmation from the Sumner County Sheriff or TBI on whether they followed up on that lead, but a source with the United Cajun Navy says since the land is federal, federal representatives would need to accompany law enforcement on any of their searches, and that could happen this week. Meantime, Sebastian's father and his team are given access inside this warehouse. Sebastian, son, dad. But there are concerns among county officials over the search volunteers about safety, complaints over trespassing, and possibly compromising any kind of evidence or scene that might surface. Today, County Commissioner Don Schmidt asking for volunteers to, quote, leave the search to professionals. That did not go over well with many online followers of Sebastian's case or volunteers actively trying to find him. I'm not going to stop. Well, TBI did release a statement, a lengthy statement, just two days ago saying investigators continue to follow up on any tips and leads they receive daily, nearly 250 of them so far, and review information as well for Sebastian's case. They said much of the work they're doing to track down Sebastian is not something that you will necessarily see in the public eye. Well, no. Law enforcement, they don't have a YouTube channel. Well, I mean, a lot of them do but they don't walk around with their cell phones videoing, recording what they do. Truth to Light wants to know, why are they soft on these parents? I don't know what's gone on behind closed doors, but I mean, I'm going to assume they've had to ask them the hard questions. I did hear Chris on Nancy Grace say last night that he would take a lie detector test. So we are going to get to that. Hold on. Because there's a lot of Nancy Grace haters out there. I think she did a really good job with those two. She didn't let them run the show. And I think um, a lot of information got out and through comparison watching other interviews they have done if you want to call them that you can see that the story is ever changing i'm sure trev has picked up on that oh yeah they yeah, have it's like i said it's there's been details added and things have somehow adapted over the days and this is opinion only just conversation. We have discussions here. If, well, we know Sebastian's father, Seth, wants this UCN group involved in helping him find his son, why, why are people giving this man a hard time? I mean, it's a sad day in America when you've been actively looking for your son and suddenly overnight you've got haters because you brought in a search group. You know, there's a pop, there's a slight population of people that suspect Seth as well. Not nearly as many that look in other directions, but some have told me they believe that he's involved. <laughs> Goodness. January 26, Monday morning, 6 a.m., from everything we can tell, that is the moment that Sebastian's mom and stepdad realize he's gone. For just one moment, imagine that. You go in your child's room where you find your child every single school day morning and you wake them up, but at 6 a.m., he's not there. Can you imagine what must have gone through their minds. First of all, I want you to hear what his bio mom, Katie Proudfoot, says. Listen. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um, he said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. Okay. 
He's not in the house. That's what she said. He's not in the house. I want to know when he truly went missing. I don't believe for a second that he walked out barefoot. What was the temperature that night in Sumner County? He has sensory, sensory issues. I have a feeling cold is part of it. What was the temperature? It, it definitely got cool that night. It got really cold a few days after he left. Um, it, after he went missing, it was below freezing shortly after. I read that the night that he went missing, early morning hours, it was 24 degrees. So you're telling me high-functioning sensory issue Sebastian decided to just run away barefoot. But now they're saying abduction. This is Chris and Katie Proudfoot saying that. Not me. I stand corrected. Our friend Alicia P. said 26 degrees that night. Okay, I was two degrees off. Can't find him. Where is he? And in the last days, we learned that the official law enforcement search is actually scaling back. This as TikTokers and YouTubers are flooding the area, conducting their own searches. Listen to Eric Craddock, Chief Deputy, Sumner County Sheriff's. Really wanted to come to the community and ask for your help. We need you to search your properties every day, morning and night. Uh, if there's a shed or a crawl space or up under your mobile home or a tarp that's in your yard, check it every morning and check it every night. <clears throat> Look for any details that something has been disturbed. Uh, if there's a shirt that was there today that wasn't there yesterday, notify us. You can really help us by searching your own property twice a day. Uh, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off and we really need your help to ensure that he is uh, brought home safely. We are trying to determine what happened when this young boy, an autistic young boy, seemingly walks out of his own home in the middle of the night, we think, barefoot. How did that happen? I'm okay, I'm getting conflicting information on this. That's the reason I brought in the expert, our friend Trev, had he ever wandered off before? No. Thank you. And when kids wander off and get lost, they're found. We've seen it in many, many other cases. I don't care what those other people say when they're trying to take up for suspects. They are found. These people have resources. They have equipment. They know how to track evidence. They know how to read evidence. Things that I don't know how to do, I don't even pretend to. They can find them. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. We've read a lot online. We've seen uh, a lot of theories, a lot of speculation. But let's start with what we know to be true. Joining me right now, an all-star panel. But first, I'm going to go to two special guests joining us, Katie and Chris Proudfoot. Always an all-star panel with Nancy. I just love her especially when she has to squeeze in stuff about her twins and what a perfect mother she is, cracks me up. Okay, another question that I have a hard time getting a straight answer out of. Again, that's why I have Trev up here. Did Sebastian have and use a phone? I know he is very active on Minecraft. I don't know his username or anything. That was one of my first theories when they said he wandered off. He does have a cell phone, but it's very locked down. It has um, the only capabilities of it, I believe, are like a calculator, camera, and his contact page. So he can call like his family and people he has in there. 
I wonder why. If he's allowed to um, game on Minecraft full reign, then why is he limited contact on his phone? And I don't judge any parent for doing that. It just they're, seems like an oxymoron to me. Yeah, they, they're very strict uh, with his online usage at his uh, mom's house. He basically has none. His his Minecraft, he, he can't be online on Minecraft either. He plays um, just on his own on his Switch. So he doesn't communicate with anybody on there. He doesn't have any online capabilities on there or on his cell phone. Okay, Treb's going to help me with this because my face fell off when I read the cement comments that Chris made. First, I'm going to see what Trev thinks. Yeah, that was that was kind of odd. Um, I, I know he was following up on a comment about that and responding to it, but the way he said that the idea of that is funny did bother me. And I get people say that, I, I hear all the time people say that he's just brash, you know, he's, he's blunt, it's the Navy in him. Well, you know, my dad was in the Navy. And if, if I went missing, he certainly wouldn't be saying any, he, he certainly wouldn't be saying anything is funny. Any theory about my disappearance would be funny. And um, so maybe, you know, maybe that's just the way he is, but I, I find it kind of concerning. Oh, I think it is too. When he said that's funny and he talked about how deep the cement would have to be in order to hide a body. What's funny about that? Nothing. If you can't answer the question, just don't answer it. Because I just thought it was damn disrespectful. This is Sebastian's biological mother and his stepfather who were in their home with Sebastian when he goes missing to both of the Proudfoots. Thank you for being with us. I want to go straight back to when Sebastian goes missing. Miss Proudfoot, I understand that the day before, which would have been Sunday, if I've got the information correct, that you guys went uh, out, you went to dinner, you went to somewhere, I believe you said BJ's, where he had a, quote, colossal popcorn then you yes, came home that night and around 9 p.m. You tell Sebastian to go to bed. He says, okay, and goes to his room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That night. The colossal popcorn statement really confused me. I don't think anybody was concerned about what snacks they had. See, in these cases, when people that look suspicious hand out details they weren't asked, my eyebrows go up even further and further and further. Hence why I can't get Botox. If I do, I look like Spock. Did you find that to be odd, Trevor? Yeah, it was it was a detail that was, you know, just kind of thrown in there. The mom creeps me out. Sorry. I mean, for I mean, there's just something about her that really rubs my last nerve. And you know, and I'm running out of nerves. She's she's creeping me out, and I don't know why. I mean, she talks like one of the damn Duggars. I understand from previous statements you've made that you went to bed around midnight. Is that correct? It is. And to you, Mr. Proudfoot, Chris Proudfoot, did you also go to bed at midnight or before or after? No, ma'am. We went around, we went to bed around the same time as we were on the phone together. And was um, not home. please excuse, please excuse any of my questions. I'm simply trying to find out more about that night. Do you two sleep in the same bedroom? Woo. Nancy's pissed. Excuse my questions, but I'm just trying to find more out. Okay, so he's had some, I'm just going to say Freudian slips, where he's placed himself at the home. He said, we would have heard. We went to bed. Now, she is sitting there. He wasn't home. He wasn't home. 
Trevor, I know you've had thoughts on this because you've had amazing coverage on your channel about this. What do you think is really going on here? Was the fool at home or not? I don't know. But it seems quite up in the air for a simple a fact. It's a simple fact if you're home or not. You can only be one place at once. It's it seems like such a such a weird thing to be a mystery about. I would think so. And again, this is 2024. If he was truly in Memphis at his St. Jude's St. Jude's job, they can track his cell phone and know. So where where's the we coming from? I'm getting Don Wells vibes. I'm sorry. From when he was talking to news daddy Brian Inton. And he said, we might not have been paying attention. We means you were there. I can't say we. My brain won't let me say we if I wasn't part of the we. He wasn't actually in the home at all that weekend. Oh, you were not home. No, okay. ma'am. Okay, so where were you, Mr. Proudfoot? I was uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. How far away is that? Um, three hours and 37 minutes from doorstep to doorstep. And what were you doing in Memphis? Working. Where do you work? I'm currently working or was working at the St. Jude Children's Hospital uh, construction project. Yes, I'm very familiar with St. Jude's. You said you were working there. Are you no longer working there? Right now, that's up in the air. Well, you. Okay, so let's talk about that. Ooh, Nancy has a growl on her face. Who is going to relieve someone of their work duties because their stepchild is missing? Three hours and 37 minutes. That'd be the last person that HR would call to the office. That is employment suicide. And I'm not supposed to say that, that word on YouTube. But think about it. Think about the lawsuit. That's up in the air. Why? Why is it up in the air? Some people are saying that he's down in Mississippi because that's where he stays when he's at work and he's going back to work. Well, just last night in the trailer is what it appears to me that they're in the in the uh, fifth wheel. What are they doing down there? How are they making their money? Any idea, Trev? She says in this in this Nancy Grace interview that they're looking um, everywhere because he could be anywhere. I don't know how sitting parked up in a gravel lot in a, at a uh, RV camp is exactly looking when um, Seth is out there, basically his shoulder almost falling off, his feet blistering, and he's walking through empty warehouses in the dark yelling for his son. I don't see how that's exactly equal, but, you know, teach their own. I digress. No, aren't they in Horn Lake, Mississippi? I, that's what I've heard. I don't know. Oh, so Sebastian, in the last month, walked down there where Chris always parks his trailer to go to work? Convenient. Convenient. You've been gone ever since Sebastian went missing, so I understand. When you are home, do you two sleep in the same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma is this a three-bedroom home? Yes, ma'am. Uh, where is your room as it relates to Sebastian's room? It's on the opposite end of the house. Um, the master bedroom's on one side, and the other two bedrooms are on the other side of the house. Okay, so your master bedroom is on one side of the house, and Sebastian's room is on the other side of the house. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Okay. Now, you have a third bedroom that I believe you keep for your other daughter. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, is that Faith? Is your other daughter named Faith? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. So where is Faith's bedroom as it relates to Sebastian's bedroom? Uh, it's on, it's in the back, back side of the house. Sebastian's bedroom so is on the front side of the house. Okay. So his bedroom is away from Faith's bedroom and away from your master bedroom. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is Sebastian's room on a top floor or a fl uh, floor, le a ground level? We have a ranch style house. It's a one and a half story. So everything is hat or flat. And then you have the bonus room above the garage. Okay. Not sure if I'm reading the map, right? But I don't think his bedroom would be considered on the other end of the house. It appeared to me to be on the other side of the kitchen. So really not that far from them. And let's talk about the thud. I'm not saying you're going to grab the phone because you hear a weird noise in your home to report a thud because sometimes homes make weird noises. Okay, they do. But the timing of the thud would be important. One would think. Yeah, I think. Okay, so his is on ground floor, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that morning, was there any sign of a break-in through a window, a front door, a back door, a sliding glass door, anything at all? No, ma'am. If they truly have the Brinks security system, especially with a wandering child, it would alert you when doors open and shut. I used to have the ADT system. And when the back door opened, I'd get a beep, beep, beep. When the front door opened, I'd get a beep, beep, beep. If you're truly concerned and you work for Brinks, and you have an autistic son, who, by the way, these two, I believe, have kind of dumbed down a little bit by saying he would walk outside in 26 degree weather without a coat and no shoes. Why not have the beep beep, beep on the door so this wouldn't happen? Hell, there's some people that work for these security companies. They get the whole setup for free. They don't even have to pay for monthly monitor monitoring. Okay, no sign of forced entry. Was anything taken from the home at all? Not that we could find anything. We couldn't find anything missing. I want to circle back to Sebastian's shoes regarding if anything was missing. Do you have a burglar alarm? No, ma'am. Do you have a ring doorbell cam? No, ma'am. Okay. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? Look, I don't mean to pick away, pick apart how people spend their money, how they budget their money. But you have a $600,000 home, which means you've got nice shit in it. Why would you not take advantage of the company discount and arm it? She works for Brinks Security. It doesn't make sense to me. Trevor, make it make sense. Uh, Trevor. I, wish I wish I could. No. Too many cases of people going missing, particularly children, 
and the cameras weren't working that day. And I've heard them say that before, weren't working that day. And now here they are in Mississippi, letting the whole world know that their $600,000 house is unarmed. Genius. Real smart. It's like those people that post on Facebook saying, hey, I'm going to be out of town for three weeks. My neighbor's coming over to uh, uh, water the plants. I keep the miracle grow inside. So the key's under my rug. Wish me luck. Stupid. I have. I have not. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. I understand. Ms. Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. Those questions out of the way. Ah, was faith in the home when Sebastian went missing? No. Okay, before they answer this and go into any details, I want to make it clear, I'm not accusing these two. I'm just saying something's not adding up. How is he seeing his daughter when there is such a custody dispute between him and the ex? If what I read was correct, he lost custody of his daughter. Can you fill me in on that, Trev? He has um, he has partial custody of, of her. They've had a recent order that he won't see her for a temporary amount of time. So he doesn't he won't be seeing her for uh, the court is going to rule again. But for right now, he can't see her. But he does have partial custody. OK, so he still had partial custody. OK, what do we know about the new bed that had to be bought? Is that truly for the daughter or are we replacing Sebastian's bed? I'm not sure. And again, conflicting stories. On one channel, they're saying, yeah, CPS is involved. On another, they're saying no. I I, I can't make sense of it. No, oh, ma'am. Does anyone else have a key to your home beside your immediate family? No. No, ma'am. That night, Miss Proudfoot. At midnight, when you went to bed, what did you do until midnight? Um, I had been reading a chapter that I needed to, and I had been talking to my husband on the phone. Um, I was falling asleep on him, so that's when he told me it was around midnight. He told me to go ahead and put the dogs up and go to bed, and uh, that's what I did. I got up, put the dogs um, where they sleep, and then I myself went to bed. Where do they sleep? They have a big pen. A pen, is it inside or outside? Inside. Inside. Uh, that reminds me of another question. Do you guys have a motion sensor light or lights on the outside of your house? Yes, we do have lights on the outside of our house. <laughs> I always pause in the wrong places. Look at Nancy's face. Okay, another question. Okay, Amy and Boston, you're right. They haven't told the same story twice. It's very confusing. Very confusing. There's many rumors that, Kate, um, <coughs> excuse me, Katie Foot in the Mouth has had multiple affairs. Now, I'm not asking you to judge her by her looks or her enthusiastic voice. But do you really think that she's bringing all the boys to her milkshake? Who is that hard up? It makes me wonder if Sebastian didn't catch on to something. Have you thought about that, Trev? It's, it's possible. Hmm. 
Did they activate that night? They're not motion censored. We uh, have lights. Were they on that night? No, okay. Ma'am. Were they on that night? So the lights were out the whole night? Yes, ma'am. We don't typically turn the floodlights on. Were there any lights outside the house on at all? Just my little um, solar lights that we have in the garden. There's yep. two lights on the side of the house above the garage that are on at all times. Oh, yeah, those are on. Oh, there's a light above the garage that's on at all times? There's two. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So those lights were on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, the reason I'm asking is because I heard you say earlier, Mr. Proudfoot, that your neighbors have been very, very forthcoming with their ring camera info. And I was yes, trying to determine if any lights were on, what, if anything, they may have caught. But I understand from your previous interviews that nothing of any evidentiary value was caught. And also, in another statement you gave, I understand that the video of the two flashlights, and I'm saying that with air quotes, that's not exactly what that was at all. We now don't believe that two flashlights were observed around your home. Is that correct? Yes. You're very correct. Okay, let's talk about the two flashlights because if they do have security lights outside and somebody is far away, like I've got one on each side of my garage door. So when they come on to somebody from far away, it could look like two flashlights coming on. Do we really think two people were in the backyard with flashlights? Because I had a totally different theory yesterday with the two flashlights. But then hearing Nancy's interview saying we no longer believe there was two flashlights. So are they lying about the lights to cause confusion? Or what are we thinking now, Trev? I don't know. The, the video to me looked like two lights moving. And maybe it's, you know, they TBI has said that it doesn't hold any evidentiary value. They've said that, you know, it was proven not to be much of anything. So, you know, if that's if that's the case, then then I guess it's not anything. Okay. Aggie said, in my opinion, I think Sebastian caught mom with the neighbor man. Well, she's Chris's fifth wife, so he doesn't really have high standards. Okay. Let's face it. You've been divorced a lot of times. A lot of people don't want to pick up someone else's luggage. Is this something that she would want to hide from Chris? Because the rumors are rampant. And they're still sitting together. We have another case where they're sticking by each other and something doesn't look good. If I've heard the rumors, I know you have, Trev. Oh, yeah. They're definitely going around. 420 Growers says, I need to change my name to Speculations and Speculations. Welcome to the channel. It's called Discussion. I'm not an investigator. I don't have a badge. I don't work for the FBI, the sheriff's office in Sumner County. I don't work for the TBI. They don't let me peek at the file. So all we can do is put together what they are saying to have a discussion. But I'm glad you're here. Imagine, what do you think, Trev? Crime lines and speculations. Woo! Woo! Not very catchy, but thanks for your input. <clears throat> okay. Question regarding your vehicles. Uh, Ms. Proudfoot, what make and model do you drive? I drive a um, Infinity SUV. Year? 2017. And, sir, what do you drive? I drive a uh, diesel truck, Chevrolet. Year? 2017. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a 2021, I think. 
So your Infinity SUV was parked in the garage or outside the garage that night, Miss Proudfoot? In the garage. In the garage. And Mr. Proudfoot, your vehicle was on location in Memphis. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So there's only one car at the home. Is that right? There was actually a, a work vehicle in the driveway at the time as well, but it hasn't moved. We can't just, we can't give out that information because we don't have permission from her work. I don't understand that. What? About the make and model of the vehicle. I have a work van that was also parked in the driveway. Why is that? Uh, if it's out in the driveway where people can see it, why is that privileged information? I don't get that either. Some people can look at just some headlights, not me, and they can tell you what year a vehicle is. I'm not one of them. So why is her job supposedly saying not to give out information on her work vehicle that's parked outside? I mean, she's lucky she gets to bring it home every night. A lot of places, you park them in the parking lot, you bring your personal vehicle, you park it in the employee parking, then you get into the work vehicle. What's going on with the work vehicle that they don't want to talk about it? Any idea, Trev? Yeah, I think she goes on to say they haven't heard. They go on to say they haven't even asked the company. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. I guess they just... It's just odd that they don't want to talk about that. I mean, it's just sitting in the driveway. It shouldn't be a big deal. It's deflection and evading questions. Or Chris might even say it's a HIPAA violation. I don't know. Because I about shit a biscuit the last time he said it was a HIPAA violation to answer a certain question. We just don't have permission from her company to divulge that information. Have you asked? No, ma'am, we have not. Nobody has asked us so that, that question. Was... Okay, so you have a work van. Um, question to you, Ms. Proudfoot, what do you do for a living? I am an installation technician. That night, was the work van blocking your driveway? Could someone go in and out of your driveway? The van is parked at the back of my driveway, so someone can pull in, yes. Got it. Do you park your Infinity SUV in the garage or outside the garage? In the garage. In the garage. Do you have a, an auto garage door? With the clicker. Right. Uh, do you leave that up or down at night? Down. Could anybody lift it up? Like, is there an on and off button outside? Or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it? You'd have to know the code or have the clicker. You think she kind of dropped the ball there, Trev? With what she said. Uh oh, Trev's muted again. On which on which part of the here, I'll go back. Listen to this. The van is parked at the back of my driveway, so someone can pull in, yes. Got it. Do you park your infinity SUV in the garage or outside the garage? In the garage. In the garage. Do you have a an automatic garage door? With the clicker. Right. Uh, do you leave that up or down at night? Down. Could anybody lift it up? Like, is there an on and off button outside? Or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it? You'd have to know the code or have the clicker. Does Sebastian know? That? 
She knew the answer. She purposely didn't answer it. Why? Your son's missing. How do we know Sebastian left with a small flashlight? Are they missing a flashlight? I don't do flashlight inventory around here, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, he's got a little keychain flashlight, like one that you would clip onto like a, a keychain or whatever or lanyard, and it, it is missing from his room. Okay. All right. Thank you. That makes more sense. For the code. Not to the garage door, but to the man doors. Not to the garage door, but to the house door? regular door, yes. So is there a code to get in your home, or do you use a regular key? There's a code. And he knows that code? Yes, ma'am. Question. I, I'm just trying to figure out how he would have gotten out or if somebody came into the home. Could they have gotten through the garage door? No, unless they know the code or had the clicker, which they did not. Do you lock your doors at night? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Sebastian would know the code. Sebastian would know the code for the garage and house. It's also been stated that Sebastian knew his father's phone number by heart. Didn't just have it programmed in his phone that was extremely limited for communication which I have no problem with parents doing that. In a way, it's almost like they're laying the blame on Sebastian for his own vanishing. The vibes are just not gelling with me. You know, and poor old girl, instead of saying installation, she said insulation. Two totally different things, but hey, whatever. She's, you know, she's on a, no one said she would be prime time ready. Could he have left on his own through those doors? He could, yes, ma'am. But I heard in another interview where Mr. Proudfoot said he was not a, quote, wanderer. He didn't wander around. He had never left the home before on his own. Is that right? Correct. We haven't had issues with him running or um, taking off in the past. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions regarding the doors. Do you have any home surveillance Anything at all that would have given us an idea or a clue if the door had been opened or not, or a window? Not directly from our house. Well, then from where? Uh, that's what we were hoping that uh, neighborhood ring cameras and ca may have picked something up. Gotcha. I want to go back to that night. You said you were up till midnight. You were reading something. What were you reading? A chapter for school. A chapter for school. Are you in school? I was, yes, ma'am. I've since dropped my classes for the time. What are you studying? Business administration. Gotcha. Where do you go to school? Fry. So that night you go to bed at midnight after you've been talking to Mr. Proudfoot on the phone. You put the dogs away in a cage, a crate inside the home, and you go to bed. Did you check on Sebastian at that time? I did not. Okay. Do you normally? Not typically. It, since he's gotten older, I've not been checking on him as frequently throughout the night because normally he's, you know, he's good to go in his room once he goes to bed. Okay. So she said she had to read a chapter that night. Miss Always Right Ryan, thank you for the super sticker, said how was she reading if she was on the phone? 
Um, that's what I want to know too, but I'm not very good at concentrating when I'm reading. Some people can multitask better than I can. Um, hang on one second. I don't know why this isn't letting me save it. I'll come right back to this. Our friend ICU just posted this. That is clearly an ADT sign in the yard. What did they uh, steal it from a neighbor? They pick it up at a garage sale to look like the house is monitored. We've read many a probable cause an arrest affidavit or ADT guardian Brinks, etc., had to answer a warrant. ADT monitors what door is open and at what time. ADT is a big part of the Quentin Simon case because Lilazy said that Quentin got outside and drowned in the pool. Was it activated? And what are you doing? That's like buying a Pepsi when you're driving a Coca-Cola truck. What are you doing with the oh-so-secret Brinks van in the driveway and an ADT sign? Not going to lie, um, I got tired of paying for my service out in the middle of nowhere, but I kept the damn signs and stickers up in case somebody was going to break in. They think it's monitored. Any idea on this, Trev? Yeah, it's, you know, perplexing that they say they don't have any and then you have that sign. I don't know. I know some people put up the sign, but usually if you have it, you had it at one. If you have the sign, you had the security at one point. Mm -hmm. But she's not answering that question. And this picture was taken a few days ago. This isn't some old um, Facebook picture from like, you know, 10 years ago. This is a recent picture. I don't know. Earlier, you had stated you heard a noise in his room before you went to bed. What time was that? Around 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. What did it sound like? Just a thud. A thud. You stated that you said, look, I don't care what you're doing in there. Go to bed. Is that right? I was on the couch, which is near his room. And I said, uh, Bubba, did you fall out of the bed? And he said, no, ma'am. And I said, well, whatever you're doing in there, knock it off and go to sleep. So you heard his voice at 10 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea what the sound actually was? I do not, no. If he were to go out his window, All right, let's discuss the thud. I'm actually not taken aback by him saying no, ma'am, to his mom. I'm not. That's, you know, that's a polite, you know, thing to say. Uh, Trev is muted right now. But if you hear an unusual thud, and I've, here I am again having questions about dogs, if you hear an unusual noise, why weren't the dogs alerting? Yep. I'm very perplexed about the thud. Let's say he went out the window well, and fell on the ground, fell in the bushes. That wouldn't be a thud. What is the thud? Well, while I'm thinking about just a thud, I'm going to thank our friend True Love Has Four Paws for gifting five Crime Lines and Lies memberships. Turn on your gifts and enjoy being a member.
No, what would he step on? Mulch and um, bushes. Just what I said. Mulch and bushes is not going to make a thud. What is the thud? I don't think the damn thud happened. No. But that's just my opinion. That's just what I think. Did you say mulch or mush? Mulch. Yeah, no one's going to make the thud jumping out of the window into mulch. And Nancy, come on, don't, she knows what mulch is. Get real. She's got it all around her damn house. Now, my question is, opinion only. I'm going to see what Trevor has to say. They are extremely, extremely strict with Sebastian. So you hear a thud in your house and you don't check? Do you have any thoughts on that, Trev? I would think you would. But, I mean, you know, if you hear something, especially, you know, she's there, her husband's not there, you'd probably want to go at least make sure everything's good, just for peace of mind, if anything. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Mulch. Mulch. Okay. Got it. Um, has he ever gone out the window before? No, ma'am. Is his home, is his room on the front of the house or the back of the house? Front. Front. Do any of your neighbors' ring cams point toward your house? Could they pick that up? They do, but, um, it's so dark that they can only see it after it gets so dark at night, they can only see certain things where there's light. I thought there were the two lights on. On the opposite side of the house. Okay. Can we talk about Sebastian's shoes? Why are you convinced Sebastian left without shoes on? Or are you? Well, the reason that that came about is because all of his shoes are accounted for inside the house still. Are you positive? I'm positive. How do you know what clothes he was wearing? Uh, the clothes that we described are the ones I saw him in when I when he went to bed. That morning, you woke up at 6 o'clock. Is that the normal time you wake up? Yes, ma'am. Are you a heavy sleeper? Off and on. Do you take any medication at night that would make you sleep? No, ma'am. But you heard nothing. I did not know. So we know he is alive and well at 10 p.m. at 6 a.m. He's gone. You say he's never left before. Is that right? Correct. He's never run off before. And I could I confirm where was his bio dad at the time he went missing? I believe he was at work in Nashville. Had there been any family argument or altercation prior to him going missing? No, ma'am. And Mr. Proudfoot, when did you leave town? Early February. So you had been gone for days before he went missing. Is that correct? Correct, ma'am. Had you visited home since you left? Are you said from when I initially left? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I came home February 26th, the morning I was told that he was missing. From the time that you left for the job in Memphis to February 26th, did you visit the home? Yes, ma'am. When? Okay, I'm even more concerned about the security system. If Chris, foot in the mouth, 
who is the protector of the home, is out of town so much and you work for Brinks, so you know all about security, why wouldn't you have a security system? Why wouldn't you at least leave the damn porch lights on? I do. I do a double check before I go to bed, make sure doors are locked, and I turn on all the outside lighting. Something's not making sense to me, and I can't quite put my finger on it. It is safe to say that Katie here is very flat. And I'm not seeing the emotion and panic from her that I would expect out of a mother. You know, last week, we were talking about Riley. May he rest in peace. And his mother would break you in two listening to her sobs. We've had Brandy Neal on the show many times. Something's not right with mom, and it's safe to say stepdad just doesn't give a F. They're just not rubbing me the right way, Trev. I don't know. I mean, tell me if I'm far reaching or as like that one person said, change my name to speculations. No, something's just not right. Uh, I was home. I can't give exact dates. Um, law enforcement has told me not to provide exact dates, but I. Why would law enforcement tell him not to give exact dates when he was home? What does the past have to do with anything? Help me here, Trev. It's a great question. I have no idea. Law enforcement has told him not to give exact dates as to when he was home. If somebody asks me, what time did you get home today? I'd be like, oh, around 8.30 a.m. No. This is crazy. I had been home multiple times prior to February. Um, and then I left early February and then didn't come back till February 26th. The morning he was missing. So you were not home from the time you left early February till Feb 26th. Is that right? Correct, ma'am. Where were you living in Memphis? I have an RV trailer that I stay in at an RV park. RV park. Okay. Following back up on that morning, you search the home, Miss Proudfoot. Then you get in your vehicle and you start searching. Did Sebastian yes. know how to drive? No, ma'am. Was your car in the same location when you woke up that morning as it was the night before? Yes, ma'am. Has your car been searched by police? Multiple times, yes, ma'am. Uh, have scent dogs looked at your car? Yes, ma'am. So your car is in the same place. You get in the car, you start looking in the neighborhood for him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then you call Mr. Proudfoot, right? I believe I was already on the phone with him at that point. Okay. Question. Who called 911? I you, did. You did. Yes, what time? Why would someone who's not even in the house call 911? It doesn't make any sense. In order to give a first hand account of your missing child, you can't tell a third party story. You would have to be the one to call it, it to get them the information. Are you?
Are you getting some bad vibes here, Trev? Yeah, I mean it's it's odd. I she did say it was because she was she was so upset, and I could see that. I just it is odd that he hadn't been there in almost a month allegedly, and he's calling. Yeah, what's he gonna tell him? What's he gonna tell him? I haven't been home in a month, and I was on the phone at the time with my wife and she tells me she can't find her son what, what is that all he's gonna tell him what about the thud uh without looking at a call lock i can't be the exact time but on or about uh 6 20. And had you guys been talking on the phone before 6 a.m. or did you initially call Mr. Prophet at the time you realized Sebastian was gone? I called him when I realized Sebastian was gone. Have you guys been out looking for Sebastian? Yes, yes ma'am. We were given information that you guys have left the home. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Why? I'm going back to work. You're going back to work. What about you, Miss Prophet? No, I'm not going back to work. Not yet, at least. Did you leave the home also, Miss Proudfoot? Yes, she did. She's with him. She's sitting right next to him. I can figure that out without even asking him. Um, earlier in the interview, Chris Proudfoot said, it's kind of up in the air if he has a job or not. Then he says, I'm going back to work. Who would insult their employer like that to say, well, it's kind of up in the air if I've got a job or not. And then supposedly you're back at work and your wife is with you. Odds are, if Sebastian wandered off, he's somewhere locally. They, they are in friggin' Mississippi. So just a few minutes ago, it was kind of up in the air if he had employment or not. Now he's back at work. She's not going back to work anytime soon, but she's sitting in the RV with him instead of looking for her son. No, mm -mm. I'm getting too creeped out, Trev. Yes, ma'am. Why? To accompany my husband going back to work and then I'm coming back. Okay, when will you be back? Do you know yet? No, not yet. What does he need company to accompany my husband going back to work? Do you know when you're going to be back? No, not yet. It's all up in the air. Just fly by the seat of my pants. I don't know when I'm going to be back. I have to accompany him. Is he running the show or what? He knows his stepson is missing. Trev, I know you have to have some thoughts on this. Yeah, I, I just I, it's hard for me to see anyone leaving their home uh, when their child's missing, but especially when there's a chance he wandered off and could wander back. They looked nowhere around their own home, but now they're sitting in Horn Lake, Mississippi, supposedly looking around, and it happens to be where he parks to go to work. This is lunacy. You know, a few days ago, My cat, OJ, got out. I didn't pack up and drive to Texas to look for him. I was looking around my neighborhood. 
How far is Horn Lake from their area? I would say about four hours. Yeah, I think it's about three and a half to four. Okay. Are you concerned about being away while the search is ongoing? Absolutely, I am. Then why are you going? Because my son could be anywhere and we're looking everywhere and anywhere. I've got a question for you. Damn, this is like when Letitia Stout hightailed to South Carolina. And when she was asked, what are you doing fleeing Colorado? She said, because Gannon could be anywhere. No. No. He couldn't. He's a child. Do you really think that they are there to look for Sebastian? They didn't give a drop of sweat to walk around their own place to find him. And now they're down in Mississippi. Trevor, make it make sense. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it It just doesn't. If he wandered off, he's not likely going to be there and that's somewhere that that uh chris stays at so he, he knows the the area he, he was there he had to go back to get his trailer so i mean or his camper so he's been back there not sure that's the place to go to go look at but you know no, who am i i will have it is almost noon here i will have to hop off in a second to get things in place before i leave but okay I do appreciate you having me up and um, you know, anytime the door is always open for you. Let me put your uh, cash up in again. Trev, hang on. Trev, Trev 55. If you want to help with fuel, um, food, anything for Trev to get down the road. Always a pleasure to have our good friend Trev. Let's have a round of applause. Please. All right, Trev, you be super careful on your travels and um, let us know if you need anything, okay? We'll get it Absolutely. to you. Thank you all so much. All right. Prayers for Trev. He's doing more than the Proudfoots. Proud feet. Yes. I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a belt what happened uh that was actually several years ago um and it to was mr proudfoot one. to mr proudfoot to mr proudfoot mr mm -hmm. proudfoot what happened oh okay. i'm sorry i misunderstood how you were asking me katie uh well she only said to mr proudfoot to mr proudfoot to mr proudfoot over and over oh i'm sorry he just zones out and for Katie, who's slinging that ass all over the neighborhood and heard a thud, how do we know what that thud was? Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh, that was a long time ago. Look at that. Oh, that was a long time ago. Um, Sebastian had gotten in trouble. He got caught, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, Hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a swat with a belt on his buttocks on the outside of his clothes. One swat. What did he lie about? At the, I honestly, I don't remember at the time, but it was probably something dealing with school. Cause that's, majority where his issues lie. Did he have other issues at school? 
some behavioral stuff, but nothing too crazy. Listen, if you're going to swing a belt at a child's buttocks over the clothes, it didn't happen just once. No. It didn't happen just once. He got caught lying. Well, then tell him for a week you can't play Minecraft till you learn to tell the truth. It was not several years ago. I don't believe that for a minute. He's already changed that story. Uh-uh. He's trying to be all politically correct. On the buttocks. On the buttocks. Any man thinks he's going to take a belt to my child over telling a lie about something that happened at school. Hell, he's going to get a belt from me. And no man talks this way. Like I said, he's trying to be all PC. On the buttocks. On the butt talks. He's autistic. Yes, he's high functioning, but nothing like making a child act out more like beating their ass. And that's what you did. And it didn't happen just one time. What kind of behavioral stuff? Um, he has a hard time. Uh, he's like awkwardly socially like blending in with students, so it's a little. He's trying to figure out how to do it, but respecting people's space, he gets a little too close, um, and then kids don't really accept that too much, so it kind of causes an issue. Um, but he'll not stop, and he continues on. So then it causes an issue, and instead of being honest about it, he, he'll lie. Like, no, I didn't. Okay, Sebastian. Oh, he's mocking him. You already know he's having a hard time at school, and you want to bully him more? What are you talking about? He has social awkwardness, and you decide to take a belt to him? And now you're mocking him. You haven't searched for him. And, and what's this? Chris's eyes are closed. Of course, I paused it. Oh, girl, she's got like a rock hard face. She doesn't change expression at all. Look at her. Katie does not change expression at all. But Chris seems to be almost happy with himself. Got caught lying, has problems at school, gets in people's space. Why, why didn't you talk to the teachers and just say, you know, what do we do? So he stays out of people's space. You have a $600,000 home. Why not put him in a different school? We're lying about doing Was that the first time? Was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt? Yes, ma'am. The one and only time, actually. When was this? Uh, years ago, ma'am. Any idea how many? Three, ten, one? Uh, <laughs> it, it Probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. So let's just let's just play along. Let's just play along with him. Three years ago, he would have been twelve. I don't believe it was three years ago, and I don't believe it was only once. At all. Prying Paula, glad you're back. Missed you. Said he told a completely different story on another interview. I mean, completely different. 
Oh, I'm about to get to that. Hell, the truck that Chrissy Poo here drives is an extremely expensive truck. If he was having those type of issues at school where he's getting in people's space, there's other schools you can send a child if you consider them to have special needs or if they're diagnosed with special needs. This story is changing too much for my liking. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS report, uh, service call. There were other CPS reports, right? Were they regarding your other child? There is one in regards to my daughter that I know of out in New Mexico with my ex-wife and myself. What happened? Uh, at the time. Uh, my ex-wife had fled to New Mexico with my daughter. We we're going through a custody and a divorce case at that time. And at the time, when I call and try to check in on my daughter, I could never get, reach my ex-wife at that time. So a welfare check was requested. Uh, law enforcement told me to call CPS if I had concerns. So I called CPS. Uh, law enforcement did make a welfare call, and that was it. Then how does that turn into a CPS complaint against you? I have no idea, ma'am. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now. Of course you do. It's your life. Of course you do. And Medusa sitting right next to you is just like blankly staring into the camera. Some people said, oh, she's inebriated. Maybe she's drunk. No, drunk people have expressions. Trust me. You find the first lie, you will eventually unravel the truth. He knows exactly why he was involved in the investigation. He knows exactly why. It was discussed with him a lot. He had paperwork. Founded, unfounded, you're mandated to do this, anger management, what have you. No, they're not secretive about those things. Now, in regards to my New Mexico case, that actually has no relevance to the, the Sebastian case. Then was there even a CPS complaint against you in New Mexico? Uh, not that not that I am aware of um, and my attorney and myself but well educated on my my case and there's nothing that we know of it wouldn't be a secret it wouldn't be a secret they don't hide those things from you I'm sure your five wives, Know what kind of a temper you have, Chris. An old girl sitting next to him that doesn't change her expression, she is reading all the comments, unless this was pre recorded. She's doing something. Something has got her attention, and it's not her son. That's why she's sitting in the fifth wheel in the RV with him doing this interview. Was there a TRO taken out against you regarding yes, your daughter? Uh, not a TRO, but a TPO. A temporary protective order. Why was that taken out? Uh, so in regards to that case, uh, my ex-wife, had a TPO put against her in the, in Tennessee at the time. When we went to court, that got dissolved. I was ordered to hand my daughter back over to my ex-wife at the time. 
she gets in a truck, she flits to New Mexico. Two days later, she files one in retaliation. Is it still in place? No, ma'am. That was dropped within, I think, two weeks of it being put in place. <clears throat> He's such a victim. And I love how he did his head towards Katie. Had one on her too. So you're both violent against children? Even when you're talking about a minor child, it's very hard to get a protection order. Very hard to get a protection order. I've got a question about the belt incident. You're telling me that was the only time that you ever hit Sebastian with a belt. Yes, ma'am. And you're also telling me that did not make it to CPS? No, ma'am, that did not. Question. Yes, ma'am. She knows he's lying. She knows he's lying, and that never made it to CPS. The question should be for Katie why did you allow your damn side piece to take a leather belt to your son? We know it made it to CPS. Look at Nancy on the screen making her O face. Look at that. That's how she had the twins. Well, not exactly that way. Angel P gifted five Crime Lines and Lies memberships and another one. Let's take a second and play the music. Regarding Fate's furniture, yes, a few days after Sebastian goes missing, did you replace furniture in Fate's room? No, ma'am. I have not replaced any furniture in my daughter's room. Is there any new furniture in the home? Yes, ma'am. There's a bed that was given to me, and it's currently in my garage. Has anything been taken out of the home? No, ma'am. I was curious about a statement that Miss Proudfoot made earlier that canine dogs hit on the barn around the home and near a retention pond. Did that happen? I'm not sure about the barn, but the retention pond, yes. She's sitting right next to you, big boy. Look right at her and say, hey, you mute, speak. You said it. What do you know about where the dogs hit? This is to find Sebastian. I don't know about the barn, but the retention pond, yes. Ask her. She's the one that said it. Because law enforcement says the dogs did not hit. But Miss Proudfoot says they did hit around the retention pond. So there's been a lot of miscommunication in regards to what is and what is not uh, to help clear that up. Um, law enforcement has actually spoken directly with me, showed me a few things. What I can tell you is there from day one, there was five dogs that started the uh, sent for the search and then after that from the next eight days out from that there have been dogs from all over the country that have come in and done searches and had scent hits in various locations um but i would say the a certain percentage of them tend to go toward the same spot which would have been a retention pond so the law
Listen, because Chris or Katie say it doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's true. Times like this with all the information that's spilling out, the misinformation, the lies, the changing of stories, today would be a good day for a press conference just to get this mis mis misinformation out of the way. If you've got time to put a tweet up telling people to not search and let the professionals do their job, then you've got time to have a press conference. I don't expect to know what they know. I don't expect them to open up the file and say, this is what we know. But because the proud feet say it, doesn't mean it's true. Too many assumptions, too many lies, too many changing of stories. Law enforcement dogs did not hit on the retention pond. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying they did. There was at least three that I know for a fact that did hit on the retention pond. And the pond has been drained, correct? And there was nothing there. Yes, ma'am. They have walked it, drained it, and there's nothing. The, the retention pond was only knee deep anyways. On one occasion, Mr. Proudfoot, you stated that you and Mrs. Proudfoot have been, quote, vetted and cleared a foul play. That was stated on Chronicles of Olivia. Is that true? What do you mean by that? Yes. So after working with law enforcement of all agencies, um, they have actually told us that there is no foul play, no nefarious issues. We've been cleared um, of all wrongdoing. We are working extremely cooperative with all law enforcement agencies uh, at any point in time that they've called, come to the house, uh, anything. Was Sebastian angry or upset before he disappeared? No, ma'am. Not, not to my knowledge. What is your theory about where is Sebastian? I wish I knew where he was, to be honest. I, your theory, your theory. I think it's possible that someone has my son. Why? Because I feel like if he had been close to the house or had walked off that we would found him by now with as many people as we had searching. Have you checked his social media? He doesn't have social media. Have you checked his phone? His phone has been thoroughly checked, yes, ma'am. Have you handed your phones to police, both of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we have. Has police searched your, all of your devices, your laptop, your iPad, everything? Everything, yes, ma'am. Other than you, Miss Proudfoot, who is the last person that saw or heard Sebastian alive the Sunday before he went missing? Uh, two of his aunts, um, a cousin, and um, the staff where we had dinner. And that was at BJ's the night before or the bowling alley? So BJ's, and then we went to the bowling alley, and then after the bowling alley, we went to dinner before coming home. I want to follow up again on the dogs hitting. Earlier, Ms. Proudfoot had stated the dogs hit around the house, the barn, and at the retention pond. Is that correct? I don't know about the barn, uh, the barn but I do know that they did track to the pond, yes. Did the dogs also hit around the house? Yes, yes. ma'am. On the outside of the house? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Were they scent dogs or cadaver dogs? They brought in uh, both cadaver and uh, tracking dogs. 
which dog hit a cadaver dog or a scent dog? Scent dog. It's all been scent dogs that have hit. The cadaver dogs have not hit on anything that we know of. What do you believe Sebastian was wearing when he disappeared? And would that have been what he slept in? Yes. So the clothes, the the black sweatpants with the white stripes and the long sleeve black shirt, that is what he went to bed in. Um, and the reason that I believe he was still wearing those clothes is because when we searched, I did not find those clothes in the house. So I have to assume that that's what he was still wearing. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say that's what he wore when he went to bed? Yes, ma'am. Joining us right now, in addition to Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot, the bio mom and stepdad of Sebastian, an all-star panel, first to Brian Trasher joining us, vice president of the Cajun Navy, who has joined the search. Brian, thank you for being with us. Who asked you to join the search? Well, we had deployed a team up to Nashville, Tennessee last week um, in response to the missing college student, Riley Strain. Um, and uh, we stayed up there until he was found. While we were in the area, we had a lot of people reaching out to us on social media, um, saying that there was a young boy who had been missing for several weeks that was only about 20 miles away from where we were. So we, we talked to a few people, got some information and decided to uh, deploy part of our team that was already up there to Sumter County to investigate and see what we could do to help out. Yet, Katie put this out. Sebastian, mommy loves you. Please share and search and report anything that could help. We have organized help with Cajun Navy to join the search, and we pray every day we find Sebastian and can bring him home. That's not what a home skillet from the Cajun Navy is saying. They went up to see if they could help. Why all the lies, my friends? Why all the lies? If mommy loves Sebastian so much and she was the last one to physically see him, then why is she sitting in an RV in Mississippi right now? None of this makes any sense. If he truly just got adventurous and ventured out barefoot and without proper attire on for a cold night, in my opinion, he would have been found by now. I've even wondered if maybe she's hiding him out somewhere because she didn't want him to go to his father's. I saw many posts after Riley was found, and no, the Cajun Navy did not find Riley. The barge employee found Riley. And if you're that overprotective of your son to where you're extremely strict with him, then why did he go to bed in the same clothes he'd had on all day? I don't know. We have a lot more stuff to look into here. Do you guys want to continue covering this case? Because I think a lot more is going to come out. And the reason I'm not going to speak out about the United Cajun Navy is because, one, Brooks doesn't want to get sued. Not in the mood for it today. Two, 
if Sebastian's father, Seth, wants them involved, then who am I to say? So we're going to continue our conversation. Please make sure you have your reminders on. I know we had a couple of goofballs in here today. Thank you, Mod Squad. You are the absolute best. Undead Raymond said, why, if you're strict with him, cause the rules for thee, not for thee, for, not for me? We're going to talk more. We're going to talk more about the strictness coming up. Hobby Homestead said, "Can you explain why people are saying Cajun Navy are scammers, please?" I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've heard that they're nonprofit, which you would have to be, because it takes money to do these searches. So some people. Um, like we had a woman that used to come around here all the time and she would talk about adventures of purpose. And she's like, they do it all for free. And I'm like, no, they don't. Nonprofit doesn't mean you're Jesus and you don't accept money. They probably misappropriated some funds. They're probably stepping on some no some toes that people don't like. I don't know. All I know is if his daddy, who has tirelessly been working to find his son, wants him around, then again, who am I to say? If they're volunteering, and it's not the Cajun Navy that started working back during Katrina. This is a totally different one. I was confused about that myself. Doesn't take much to get me confused, but that's okay. You're in good hands here. Again, thank you so much for being here for Sebastian. Big round of applause for our friend Trevor, who was the first person to cover Sebastian's case when he was just considered to be wandering around. Susie Sue said, was Sebastian insured for a life and in, life insurance policy? Yeah, basically the same way I am because life insurance policies are part of benefits through my husband's job and through Sebastian's dad's job. So that doesn't mean that his dad went and took out some, you know, $5 million policy on him and then wanted him dead. A lot of jobs offer life insurance. So we're going to stay with it, my friends. Figure out what the hell's really going on around here. And I hope what's really going on is nothing. I really hope he's with a friend. He found some Minecraft buddies. Something like that. Because where my mind is going right now is not good. Because nothing's adding up. If I don't see you in Discord today or one of the Facebook groups, which I think there's only one open right now because I can't keep up, um, I will be back here tomorrow at 9 a.m. If any of you can share the love by sharing this live, or catching it and sharing it before we go live, that would be great. I would appreciate that so much. Share it to your socials, however you want to do it. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your Taco Tuesday. And again, if I don't see you around Al Gore's internet, then I'll see you back here tomorrow at 9 a.m. You guys are the absolute best.